Welcome to our Banquet Build Series. I'm Diane with South House Designs and we transformed our dining hall from this to gain more seating, more storage, more style, and more purpose into a true dining room. The centerpiece of this is a long built-in banquette. The bench itself is done and waiting for paint. The upholstery materials have all arrived and here I'm showing you how I made the bench seat cushion. Please reference the blog post noted below for more details on the whys and hows we reached this point. As you can see, I opted for a single long cushion with a gusset and no welting or cording. This is often called a box cushion. I added one long hidden zipper in the back gusset. Here I'm sharing a breakdown of this project with all the steps I went through so you will not be intimidated to do one yourself. I like to start this kind of project by wrapping the foam with my Dacron batting. And in this case, the batting has already been glued to the top and bottom, and now I'm finishing the sides a special way because I am not using welting or cording on this cushion. I decided not to stop my batting there and, and glue another piece on here, which is what you would typically do. <clears throat> Instead, I have opted to bring <clears throat> to cut my batting about an inch, inch and a half thicker, wider than my foam on both the top and the bottom. They are glued on now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And because this is one inch, this piece, the glue caught this side, but did not catch the rest of this. So I'm just running through with a very quick and easy whip stitch to pull the two battings together so that they have kind of a clean face under the fabric. I don't want a ridge to show. So I'm just pulling it just to where it flattens that out to where the top and the bottom side meet. And to do that, the easiest way is with one of these half circle needles. But you can do it with a straight needle if that's all you have on hand. And I just grab the top part, I don't go through all the thickness, and just the bottom part of that one on the bottom, which is actually going to be the top outside of that cushion. You want to do the outside edges and you bring it to where it just meets. You don't pull it too tight or it creates a ridge. So I just want it to meet and I can go back a little bit. If I see that I'm developing a ridge, I can tighten or loosen as I need if I'm doing it as I go along. It's much easier. So I'll do three or four, five or six stitches, and then I'll go back and look at the tautness of them. See, this one is a little bit loose right here, so it's, it's leaving an open spot, but if I do it too tight, it will cause a ridge. So that looks good there. And then I continue on. So why would I want to do the inside first? Well, that's easy. It gives me the opportunity to test fit the outside of the cushion, what's going to show on the actual cushion itself before I even start cutting my fabrics. From my test fit, I learned that even though my cushion is two inches deep and I'm just doing a half inch seam allowance, I still needed to cut my gussets three and a half inches wide to um, accommodate the extra batting. And I'm going to then make my the pillow top and bottom 103 inches long even though the the foam is 101 inches long and I will fill the two ends with extra Dacron batting which will pluff up the corners that's a pet peeve of mine is when corners of pillows and cushions are not filled properly many home deck fabrics have different kind of nap it may be very subtle and it doesn't show until hanging in different light when it becomes very obvious. Save yourself headaches by using directional pins. Get in the habit of always putting a safety or straight pin in the top of each piece of fabric before you cut it. Then whenever you are matching things up, always make sure the pin is at the top and you are good to go. Whether a tablecloth, a wide cushion, window treatment, or bedding, the industry standard is for two seams equidistant from the two outside edges. Here's my easy way to center a piece rather than a seam. Start with two pieces right side together matching any pattern and stitch the two side seams. Now you'll have a large tube, press the seams open, 
and lay them directly on top of each other. Divide the measurement you need for the width in half. Measure and mark that half width from one of the folds. Cut on that mark. Repeat for the other side of your cushion, and that's it. Easy, right? Now to make my zipper cup gusset, I need my zipper, of course, and the two different size gussets that are gonna go on each side of the, hit, of the zipper to hide it. I always start with my zipper open, you don't have to. Then with right sides together, I start with my smaller one, my narrower um, piece of gusset. I line it up right along the edge of the zipper tape. And then I stitch it right along. I press it so that the zipper tape is flat and the fabric folds back over it. And then I top stitch that. One side is done. And with my other side, you can zip the zipper up or you can leave it loose, but you're going to line the right side up with the other one and line it up to the ends. And now instead of folding this all the way back and pressing, I'm going to fold it just part way back and press it. And that's going to make the little pocket that's going to hide the zipper. And I want to be consistent in how, so that this remains the same three and a half inch width that my other gussets are. And then we will stitch it just like a regular gusset. Now here is where you can top stitch it again, right along here, or if your zipper isn't very long and your fabric um, holds its press really nicely, you don't even need to do that. You can just do it because then we're going to stitch it this way and this way at the two ends, and that will hold that pocket down nice and smoothly for you. Mine is very long, so I top stitched mine. Make sure your zipper pull is out of the way and then stitch across these two ends. And at the other end also. And now you have a nice little pocket with your zipper hidden away, but easily accessible when you need it. And once you have this all done, go back and measure the width of your gusset and make sure that it matches up with the other ones. If you need to, trim off the extra so that it's the same width as all your other gussets. That's really important that everything be the same width. You'll notice in the description below, I specified some extra gusset plackets. These extra plackets finish off the ends of your zipper very cleanly and without bulk in the corners, and that's why I always use them. It may seem like extra work, but it actually saves time and you end up with a more polished, professional looking project. Lay one gusset placket right side down on the corner of the cushion top, lining up the two outside edges, like the blue arrows show here. Now fold the length back onto itself, but short of the end by about an inch, like the red arrows. Then lay the zipper gusset on top of that, with the long outside edges all lining up and the ends short of the gusset edge. The yellow arrow is a reminder that you should have already stitched across the ends of your zipper, holding everything in place. This stitching should be higher up than the gusset fold. Pin it all together. Now, gently fold it back and take a peek at how it all looks. If it's good, now stitch down the length of the gusset and cushion top, but it is critical critical that you stop and back tack short of the ends both directions. Since I'm using one half inch seam allowances, I am stopping one half inch from both ends. Now sew each gusset along the remaining three edges of your cushion top, remembering to stop and back tack a half an inch from all the corners. I like to cut my gussets longer than I need and trim them off when I make the corners. But before we get to the corners, it is much easier to attach the bottom of the cushion with all the gussets. 
It is super important that they line up exactly across the gusset from the top. And this is what works for me. It's very important that the top and the bottom line up right where I want them to, that they'd be lined up together. So I start by placing this seam on top of the other seam and moving it right up here. And then I'll pin that in place and then I will slowly work the other direction. So these two seams down my top and bottom, I line those up first, pin them in place, and then I ease the rest of the fabric together, pinning it fairly frequently which I don't normally do because I know pinning takes time, but when you're lining up a cushion like this, it's really important to do. What you're seeing here is the top and bottom of the cushion, and this is one of the short side gussets, and this is the end of the long gusset that goes all the way across the front of the cushion. And this is where the effort that you put in to line everything up exactly right really pays off because now, all I have to do is stitch between this point and this point. These will fold back down because they are pressed, so that's why that's folding over there. Funny, but it, I will not catch those. Okay, I'm gonna lay them flat and I'm gonna stitch between this point and this point, and then trim it up and that corner will just turn perfectly. So now my corner is stitched and I just trimmed off this extra. And now I want to trim out these corners because look at all of the bulk there in that corner. So I just fold this back and very carefully I cut this triangle off. And it's gonna cut one, two, three points like that. There are my three points. I'm gonna do this on the other side too you just want to be careful that you don't cut there into your actual fabric. So I'm pulling that down, making sure, and I cut these corners off. And there I have the corner. Then we'll turn and press. I'm going to press that seam, and I want to press my ends, my end corner, and then we'll turn it. Just a word of caution. Before you close up your last seam, make sure that you leave your zipper open a bit so that you're able to get in there and open it all the way. I have done it on other times. <laughs> the battle with the cushion, and this might just be the most challenging part of the entire project. Um, no, seriously, thank you so much for coming. Please do not hesitate to send me any questions you might have. I know I covered a lot in very short time, um, but I hope that it inspired you to know that you could do this too. It's not that hard. Be sure to check out how I made the upholstered wall-mounted backrest. It was probably the easiest part of the whole room, well, once I figured it out. And there are several blog posts as part of the Dining Room Makeover series. They are all linked in the description below.